Hey guys, today we're going to dive deeper into Hockey Ultimate Team with the special edition cards. I'm going to explain what they are, how to get them, and the changes that we have seen from the past NHLs into this one. I'm also going to show you guys what to expect this year from the different type of special edition cards that you could have based off of last year's special edition cards. First thing you need to know about these special edition cards is that they do not replace your base cards, your normal cards, in your game while you play. They're brand new cards, but sometimes they might be re-released though. And they are found in the packs related to that player type. So all the known players will be in the gold packs, and there's a lot of uh, bronze and silver team of the week cards, and those are in the bronze and silver packs as well. Unfortunately, not many people buy bronze and silver packs. That's why you don't see bronze and silver team of the week cards in the auction house too much. These cards, with the exception of Legends cards and Hut Hero cards, are only available for a limited time. Team of the week is just for a week. Player of the game is only for one day. It's usually just until the new cards come out. Legends cards are available in gold base packs all year long. They may even include some more Legends cards in the future as well. While Hut Hero cards are based off of sets that you complete in Hockey Ultimate Team. And as such are not found in packs, but you have to create a whole collection of cards of one team with some collectibles, gold and carbon collectibles. And you put them all together so you can get a Hut Hero. The next thing I want to share with you guys is from a Redditor by the name of... Uh, or Earl, or I'll go with the last part of his name there. And he provides an in-depth analysis on how cards are getting upgrades in Hockey Ultimate Team. You guys can read a little bit about it here, or you can go through the link that I provided in the description for all of it. But we're going to talk about the main points and how this has changed from the past NHLs. So the first thing you need to know is that in the past when cards received an upgrade in Hockey Ultimate Team, all of their stats increased by one or two. That's not the case this year, even though the overall increases by one or two. This year, the stats that get an increase are the ones that are based off of the synergies that those special edition cards get. And under normal circumstances, those base cards only have one synergy. These special edition cards will have two or more synergies, and it usually is a different one to pretty much complement whatever kind of team you're trying to build. Brad Marchand has like three or four different special edition cards right now, and it's mentioned in this Reddit post. And the idea is that the highest overall rating card doesn't necessarily mean it's the best. Sure, it'll get its best attributes in the highest rated card, but that doesn't mean that the lower rated cards are inferior to it. And besides, the synergy that you may want is on a lower rated card and the higher rated card could have some really bad synergies on it. But the stats do stack, so the five or so attribute points that Brad Marchand got with his first upgrade will carry over into his second one, and then he'll get an additional five or so attribute points increased. Then a little further down, he talks about the idea of sculpted cards, which is the high-end cards, the top of the food chain, like Bure, who are receiving upgrades and the upgrades aren't necessarily affecting now we're going to go back and talk about the current special edition cards out there the first one is team of the week these are going to be cards that have excelled throughout the week in their respective leagues occasionally if it's a slow week they might do some kind of theme where a uh, certain type of players get these special edition team of the week cards. When it comes to player of the game cards, you can predict these pretty well. There's another Reddit post out there that can help you tell if cards are going to get a player of the game card. And the last requirement is that that person's team must also win for them to get the player of the game card. These requirements were applied to the World Cup of Hockey Player of the Game cards, but that was just for the World Cup of Hockey, so there will be no more World Cup of Hockey Player of the Game cards released. Milestone cards are released whenever a player either breaks a record or reaches a certain milestone in their career. Players will receive milestone cards when they reach a certain amount of games played, goals, assists, points, 
They're usually in, in like groups of 100. Another way that milestone cards could be released is if they reach a certain position on the all-time stats leaderboards. So someone like Jager, he's currently third in the n number of points that he has, and he's closing in on Marc Messier. So you can expect him to get a milestone card when that happens. The next special edition cards are draft champions cards, and right now, for some reason, they're untradeable but still show up on the auction house, not sure what that's about. But the way that you get draft champions players is you play the game of draft champions, and every time you win, you get one draft champions collectible. When you amass 50 or 100 collectibles, you can trade those in for an untradeable special edition card. Right now, we have Grossman, Emery, and Malhotra, who have been around since the beginning of NHL 17, but hopefully in the future they'll have uh, different draft champions cards available to you guys. Okay, now the last thing that I want to talk about is special edition cards that haven't been released yet. This is going to be a following kind of the same format as NHL 16. They had a thing called Junior Flashbacks. And what those were, were bronze cards of your favorite NHL players that had their stats slightly reduced. But this enticed players to buying more bronze packs, which is something that NHL 17 is lacking right now. Not a lot of people are buying those bronze packs, and I think that this is definitely something that they will be doing in the future. The next type of card is the normal flashbacks. Normal flashbacks is pretty much taking those those players that we feel are kind of average right now, but they're highlighting like the peak of their careers. So someone like Simone Gagne, who isn't in the game anymore, but in NHL 16, he had a very low overall card. And since he ended up retiring, they decided to commemorate his career by releasing a flashback card where he had some pretty amazing stats. These next set of cards are important. They're the Movember cards. Why are they important? It's because they're choosing players who, when they had their pictures taken, don't even have beards or mustaches. It doesn't, doesn't make much sense there. But these cards are amazing. Everyone wants Movember cards because their cards are dynamic. They'll change over time. Whenever a player is going to receive another upgrade, like a Team of the Week card, so that stats are boosted, Movember cards will automatically update to that player's or to that special edition card. So you might buy a Movember card that's 90 overall but by the end of the year, it has the potential to be a 99 overall card. Something that a lot of people do before these Movember cards are released is buy a lot of packs and just save them for later. Because when you open packs, the cards that are inside are based on the special edition cards that were released at the time that you open them. Finally, the last type of card that we know for sure is going to come out is Team of the Year cards, and they're just the capstones at the end of the, the uh, season. These will be released with the highest overall that that player pretty much has and they usually won't release any other cards afterwards based on that player's performance at this point of the year then they kind of just like fool around with different uh team of the week like setups and releases but these two should be updated over time at the end of the year they're also going to be the most expensive cards that you'll get and they'll probably have a ton of synergies on them but that's that's a while from now so that's gonna end the video if you guys have any other kind of questions related to special edition cards please let me know and i'll see you next time thanks for watching